Welcome back to The Urban Monk, Dr. Petram Shojai. Good to be here with you. So I want to talk about CBD. There are so many people claiming CBD is like, you know, a miracle drug, left, right, and center. Anything that uh, becomes commercially viable suddenly becomes really cool, uh, especially in America, um, with or without results. Um, I know plenty of people who've had wonderful results with CBD, uh, but it's also Wild Wild West out there. So uh, my guest today, Leonard Lanau, wrote the book on it. Uh, he's been doing this for a very long time uh, before it got cool. Uh, and has been really pushing uh, the envelope on trying to share the science and what we know about what CBD can do. So, Leonard, welcome to the Urban Monk. Uh, thank you. It's glad, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, glad to have you, man. So, give us a little bit of your backstory, how you got into this mess, how you started studying and working with CBD. Uh, well, I kind of came into CBD through the back door because I was initially interested in cannabis that had THC in it. And I started a company, started growing it and making products and tinctures out of it about uh, 11 years ago. And about nine years ago, um, I had a client that had cancer. And I had just come across a strain called Harlequin that had CBD in it. It had about two times as much CBD as THC. And I gave that to this client with cancer. Now, she had a lung tumor that was too big to operate on, too big to radiate, and they tried chemo and it didn't do anything. So um, they actually gave her six months to live and told her to, uh, you know, go put her affairs together. She came to me and asked me to help her. So I made this tincture for her, which was primarily CBD. And it was new to me. I didn't really have a lot of experience with it, but I had heard it was good for this kind of stuff. So <clears throat> lo and behold, uh, after three months of using the CBD product, she goes and gets an MRI scan, and that tumor shrunk 50%. And uh, she, she came back else? and she's, uh, I'm sorry, what did you say? Was she doing anything else? Had she no, cut she was, all other treatment? She cut all other treatment. She was on a very good diet, and she was taking some you know, supplements for uh, the immune system, but nothing pharmaceutical. And not, not that much, but she did have one of the best attitudes of anybody I'd ever seen. She was like so thankful and so full of love and, uh, you know, very generous person. And, uh, and I think that really added to her treatment. But primarily she was only doing this cannabis thing. So... In three months, her tumor shrunk 50%. And she came back and told me that. And I went, you know, holy, holy cow. You know, if that's what CBD does, I'm all in. And I went out and I started researching CBD and finding any CBD strains that I could find, live plants that I could clone and make uh, and grow for my business. And... Um, I had, you know, accumulated uh, six or seven different strains. Some had more CBD than others. And I became known as the guy for CBD. And I had all these CBD products. What year was this? This was um, uh, 2010. Cool. 2010, yep. 2011. Yep. Yep, before it Back got cool. Then. Before it got cool. So before it got cool, I was out there on a limb, and nobody had heard of it, and it was, my stuff wasn't selling, and I was not it wasn't a good business move for me, uh, until Sanjay Gupta, Doctor Gupta from CNN, did a documentary called Weed, and he highlighted a strain called Charlotte's Web. And a little girl, Charlotte Figgy, who had uh, epilepsy. And uh, they, they showed how, 
you know, calmed her epilepsy. And epilepsy is so dramatic because you got a person who's seizing and, you know, really in stress. And they, they put a little of this under their tongue and they just stop. This calms them down and they stop. And it's CBD that does that. So, you know, after that uh, documentary came out, all of a sudden CBD became cool and everybody came looking for it. And I was the guy who had it, <laughs> you know, and I had, I, I had several different uh, strains. So after a while, I don't remember exactly what year it was, we got a strain called ACDC that it was developed in Israel and brought over by Dr. William Courtney. And it had a, a ratio of 24 to 1, 24 parts CBD to one part THC. So CBD is non-psychoactive. It's actually anti-psychoactive. And THC, we call it psychoactive. It's got an intoxicating uh, quality to it. But at a ratio of 24 to 1 CBD, there's, there's no chance that somebody's going to get intoxicated. The CBD dominates the field. And in fact, CBD and THC go after the same receptors in the body. So if, if somebody did have THC or overdosed on THC, if they took CBD, it would knock off some of those uh, molecules from the receptors and bring the person down. That's good to know if you have too much edibles, folks. Yeah, I mean, it's good to have in your medicine yeah. cabinet as a backup plan. Oh, man, I know so many people who just, you know, never partied, never did any of this kind of stuff and suddenly are trying edibles and are just like on the floor praying to God because they, you know, it's just too much. <laughs> right? Well, the, like the, I, I understand. I've been there. I've yeah. been there. But, yeah. uh, but the good news is that in the 5,000 years that – people have been using cannabis that it's been documented not one person has died no it just feels like you're dying yeah no, it feels like you're you're, you're praying for death that's true you're praying for death but uh but no one's actually ever died from an overdose you know uh so that's that's good news i mean they can't say that about aspirin or any other drug mm -mm. so uh you know we're even we're, alcohol <laughs> yeah, certainly not alcohol. Mm -hmm. But it, it, me as a uh, professional in the business, I feel really good that I know I'm not going to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. none of my products are going to hurt you. You know, maybe it won't help, but at least it's not going to hurt. So coming back to that cancer uh, patient for just a second. Yeah. Uh, when I When I had that experience, I was like, you know, holy shit, this is so exciting. I was, you know, and I'm running around telling everybody about it and they're going, Leonard, you can't say you found the cure for cancer. Like this, you got to shut yeah. up. You know? yep. It may have uh, helped. It may have just been a coincidence. Yeah, it may this have been right. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. in the years since then, uh, by the way, I have a, a collective in California that's a, a medical model where you need a doctor's recommendation to join our our collective. And so uh, we've been, you know, making products and treating people uh, for 10 years and we have 5,000 members, something like that. It's five to 6,000. And uh, so I have experience of seeing well, what's working, what's not. So when somebody comes to me and they say, you know, they've got cancer, all these different stages and some people are on chemo and some people are trying to avoid chemo and, you know, it's, it's all over the map where they're at. But in general, that shrinkage of 50% in the tumor over a three month period is kind of the average of what I saw. The, wow. How many, the, how many cases with cancer? Uh, at least a hundred, at least a hundred people. Um, I haven't uh, documented it yet, uh, but um, a lot uh, uh, enough people <laughs> to know. I was going to say the worst case scenario was we we got the cancer to stop growing. Maybe we didn't get rid of the tumor, but at least it's not getting bigger. So, uh, you know, and then a couple people were like they were so far gone. It's in their pancreas and their liver and. 
you know, stage four and it's all over their body and, uh, you know, it's kind of too late to, to do mm-hmm. much. So, yeah, we, you know, we have lost some people, but if they get, if we get them early enough and they're committed, you know, and I, I can I consult, uh, I do consultations with people to guide them and, you know, give suggestions and all that. And I am not a doctor. I am not a medical doctor. Uh, I'm just, a herb, an herbalist and, uh, a guy who's been in the industry and, and I've been a user for, I hate to admit it, but I'm 76 years old and I've been using it since I was in college. So, uh, you know, a long time. Sinner. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I was a sinner then. Now I'm a saint because I'm taking, I'm a businessman. Yeah, totally. (laughs) But, uh, I'm just saying I've been using it a long time. So when, you know, and I meet a lot of people through my consultations. You know, they read my book and they want to talk to me. And a lot of people, yeah, they were around in the 60s and the 70s when it was really cool to to smoke. And then they got married and got a job and got into business and they hadn't had any, you know, cannabis in 30 years or whatever. But now they hear it's good for cancer, good for what ails them. Um all the bullshit they picked up working their job, job. Yeah, exactly. All the stress that they've had totally. accumulated. And then, so they come to me and it's like they need someone to hold their hand, to, to teach them how to mm-hmm. inhale, you know, to whatever. Inhaling, by the way, is uh, it's a great way to take uh, cannabis, CBD. I'm lumping THC and CBD together for this part of the talk. We can talk more directly about CBD later. But since I started talking about cancer. Uh, it's the combo. Yeah, it's the combo that really works. And and in general, I, I recommend people take a one-to-one ratio of CBD to THC, one part uh, of each, at, at a high dose. High dose means 200 milligrams a day. So if somebody's taking 200 milligrams a day of one-to-one, that's 100 milligrams of THC, 10 milligrams is considered a dose, an Mm -hmm. average dose. Some people, five milligrams. Sorry, just be clear. This is for cancer patients. For cancer patients. Okay. Yeah, because at 100 milligrams of THC, you are high. You're high for five days. Yeah. You know, know, and you think you're going to die, you know. Yep. But but CBD is Mm anti-psychoactive, so... You're only half as high as you would have been if it was just THC. But no, no, uh, the people listening to this uh, podcast don't go out and get 200 milligrams and take it in a day. Uh, when I when I uh, guide people in how to do this and they're not used to doing THC or even if they're used to doing 10 milligrams at a dose, to do 100 milligrams is way beyond what you can tolerate. You just don't have the tolerance. But the body is adaptive and it can you can build a tolerance. So uh, one of my latest recommendations, which seems to work really well, first of all, I prefer tinctures to smoking it. And, I'll, and I, that's what I started to talk about. When you inhale it, you, you know, the medical effects come on immediately, but when you're but they only last two to three hours. But when you're using a tincture or some kind of an edible, you're orally ingesting it. That takes um, 20 minutes, a half hour to become effective, maybe an hour and a half before it's at its maximum level. But then it lasts for six to eight hours. So, So one of the beauties of a tincture is that you can, you know, you take it three times a day, eight hours apart, and you're medicated all the time. So that's that's one uh, benefit of it. Another benefit is you can count the drops. You know, if uh, 35 drops is one milliliter and, and uh, <clears throat> the tinctures that I make, they're about a half a milligram per drop. Um, you know, you can dial it in. I want to take seven and a half milligrams. So, you know, I would start off at five milligrams see what that does. I mean, five drops, not five milligrams. I would start off at five drops, you know, wait my eight hours, see what I got. And I'm going, ah, I didn't really feel it very much. Then I'd go to six drops next time. 
I go to take it, then I'd try seven drops. So I, I titrate up slowly till I get the desired effect. What is the desired effect if you're taking it for, say, cancer? Are you, are you needing to have a psychological effect that stays under uh, overwhelm? Like, what, what does that look like? Now, with cancer, it's a physical thing. Um, with cancer, we're... You know, let's let's. If you really got cancer bad, we're tar targeting 200 milligrams. If you got it in the early stages, maybe 100 milligrams. You know, if it if you if you got cancer and it's growing slow, and it's not a problem, then I would try a, a minimal dose, a lower dose. Try it for three months. Go and get your MRI scan and see is it still growing? Have I stopped it from growing? Is it shrinking? evaluate it and then come back and, you know, design your program going forward based on the results. But with cancer, you don't really know if it's working or not, unless it's in a place where you can feel it like a lump in the breast mm -hmm. or a lump somewhere. So I talk about in the beginning, I used to think, well, this stuff shrinks tumors and it does shrink tumors. But over the years, I've noticed that some tumors don't shrink. They start off being hard, and you can feel them. And then as you take the CBD primarily, CBD softens that tumor. And t So here's the way I look at it. CBD inhibits the growth of cancer cells. It stops them from growing. THC shrinks tumors. Together, it's like this special magic. There's a synergy between the two. And you get a third medicine that's way more powerful than either one by themselves. So one thing you see when you're taking it over time is that the tumor will shrink in size. But another thing you'll see is that it'll stay the same size, but it'll go from being hard to becoming soft. And it just softens and gets softer and softer. And then it just dissolves and disappears. I've seen that happen. So size on an MRI is not always the you know, only indicator. So there's an oncologist listening to this right now saying bullshit, bullshit. If, if any of this was true, it would be in all the published literature. I would know about this. It would, you know, revolutionize my field. How come I haven't heard of this? What's your answer to that? Well, my answer to that is, uh, it wait 10 years or 20 years and, your field, oncology, will look back on what they're doing today with chemo, radiation, and operation as the only tools. And they'll say, that was the dark ages. That was like when we were letting blood out of people back in the Middle Ages. You know, they're going to look back on what they're doing now as being archaic. So we're ahead of the curve. And I'm talking not from clinical trials, but from, uh, you know, individual results that I see one at a time, actual uh, results from people. So there are trials that are being conducted right now. Uh, some of the hospitals here in California are doing research. I know the doctors that are doing them. But are these, of, are these serious people who have, these are serious, well-respected people who great. write uh, in the journals and they have published some stuff and they've published journals on what they've done with mice and some other, you know, lab rodents and stuff. But um, the and they're in the midst of clinical trials, which is like a five year thing. They're like maybe two years into it and they're doing it on breast cancer. There's so four types of cancer. Uh, this are the initial studies that I've results that I've heard, uh, not the final results, but lung cancer, breast cancer, brain cancer, and colon cancer. Those four types of cancer are very responsive to cannabis. And then other types of cancer are somewhat responsive, but you know, it, it varies from, from cancer to cancer. Now, an oncologist, what I would say, not to the oncologist, but to someone else, <laughs> I would say, yeah, an oncologist has built his career on chemotherapy and radiation and operation. Those are his three tools. He doesn't want some, you know, hippie coming along who's growing this stuff in his backyard and 
taken his business away. He would much rather uh, prescribe uh, chemotherapy at uh, $100,000 a treatment, uh, $100,000 per year, maybe $10,000 a month, of which insurance pays for, so it doesn't really cost the person anything. But, you know, a hundred, you know, hundred thousand dollars for a treatment. My treatments cost maybe five hundred dollars a month for three months. It's like a little big difference. So what I'm saying is, if somebody has a little bit of time, it's not imminent. They're not going to die tomorrow. They've got a slow-growing tumor, like prostate cancers are typically very slow-growing. They've got they've got three months. They could test it out and see if it works for them. You know? Well, I mean, there's really no downside other than you know feeling high and not being able to get out of bed on some of this dosing. Right, and I could show you how to not get high. There are ways to not get high. One is, uh, and and I'll give you a couple right now if you want to hear them. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, love it. Okay, so we're talking 200 milligrams a day, large dose. How do you do that? Well, let's start off at 10 milligrams of CBD and maybe, you know, three milligrams of THC and in a tincture bottle where you can count the drops. And then every day when you take it, you increase one more drop of THC, one more drop of THC, one more drop, and slowly acclimate the body over time and build it up where orally you can end up taking in between 30 and 60 days, you can get up to that 200 milligrams a day level. That's one method. Another method is suppositories. Suppositories, uh, and I just kind of fell into this one and I've had a fight for my position uh, in, in that suppositories actually work. Because if you if you put it in the rectal cavity and don't stick it up too far where it's going into the colon, but it stays in the rectal cavity, it gets absorbed into the lymphatic system and it travels through the lymph glands and the lymph, lymphatic fluids and will go throughout the body. And cancer is sort of prone to go into the lymph system. That's how it, that's how it spreads from one part to another. Um, my point is that taking 200 milligrams as a suppository does not get you high, does hmm. not psychoactive. Just like uh, topicals, uh, salves and balms put on the skin, they don't get you high. They do relieve pain. They do you know, penetrate the skin. They get into the body. A topical will penetrate maybe up to an inch. You know, So if you've got something like in a knee or, you know, arthritis in your fingers or, you know, some pain that's not too deep, uh, it will get in there and work with it. It's not going to get into a hip. It's not going to go that deep. But mm -hmm. topicals, uh, they do work me medicinally. Has so those are, the doing... two, those are the two methods that I know where you don't get high. Has anyone been doing injectable? I know it's obviously uh... a completely different ball of wax. I do know some people that are, you know, re doing research with it. And uh, I work very closely with Dr. Michael Moskowitz. He wrote the foreword to my book and he wrote chapter two, which is the chemistry, you know, what happens in the body. And we work a lot together. In fact, we formed a research, call it company, uh, um, MCRCM, Medical Cannabis Research Consortium of Marin. I'm in Marin County in California. So we're doing research with this group and we get together and we meet and we're doing different types of research. So uh, can I talk about that project for a second? Yes, yeah, please do. I'm please very do. excited about it. Uh, so we're, you know, I have a, like I said, I got a lot of clients here. So we probably sell, I don't know, 25 or 30 uh, process 25 or 30 orders a day. So we went back to our people and we, you know, uh, communicate with them saying, what are you taking it for? You know, does it working or not working? And but just kind of, do you want to be part of a research project? So we got all these responses and we got a couple hundred responses back uh, out of 
1,200 requests. So a couple hundred people said, yeah, I want to be part of your, your thing. So um, we, we said, well, what, you know, what is the thing that uh, you're taking it for? We looked at our notes initially on why they were taking it. 50% of the people were taking it for pain. And uh, so Dr. Moskowitz said, uh, let's focus on pain as our first project that we're going after. So um, is it 100 and, there was 172 people that had pain issues. And uh, so we're working with them now. We're you know designing forms for them to fill out to get more information, et cetera. But we're doing original research. You know, Moskowitz is going to take that information, write a medical uh, article for a, a medical re journal and get it published because he's got connections in that field. And uh, and pain is his specialty anyhow. He's uh, runs the Bay Area Pain Clinic. So he's, you know, big. Pain's on pain. also on the bleeding edge of where society is really well, running out thing, of solutions with the op opioid epidemic. Exactly. And this is a great solution for opioids because it, uh, just speaking about the opioids for a second, CBD is, is, I don't know the word for it, but it's, it's not only not addictive, it's anti-addictive. It will cut addictions. So if somebody is addicted to opioids, it'll help them break that addiction. And I don't know exactly know how it of, does it. I know lots of clinics that have been integrating it. I mean, look, you know, folks, I mean, obviously if you're listening to this in some place that doesn't have jurisdiction to do any of this, I'm sorry, right? Um, go talk to your legislature and have them uh, stop banning abortions while you're at it. Um, and then the rest of you, if you have access to this, then, you know, there's CBD, which is obviously much more available. And and I think in all 50 states, Leonard, correct me if I'm wrong. I CBD think is legal, no, I'm, right? I'm good, no, yeah, I'm going to correct you. I think there's five states where it's not legal yet. Okay. Uh, where abortions North, aren't North, either. Yeah, probably. Utah, I think. I know North Dakota, South Dakota, and Idaho, whatever, you know. So we're about a year ago, we took a stance. We're not going to sell anything out of state. So we just, you know, focus on California and service the California area. And if people come from out of state and want to buy our stuff, we say, you know, find a relative or a friend in California. We'll ship it to them and they can ship it to you. But I, I can't get us in trouble. You know, I just can't no, uh, take not. a risk of... Uh, no, it's about changing laws, not breaking them. Yeah, right. right. Lawmakers <laughs> work for us. Yeah, oh, exactly, exactly. So, but CBD, you, there are companies that will deliver it to all 50 states. So you can buy it online. You can get it on amazon.com. Um, you know, there's a lot of companies that, that sell CBD and CBD by itself is very, very good. It's very good. Comparing CBD to THC is, uh, THC is fast medicine. CBD is very slow medicine and it, it not only works slow, it comes on slow. It slows the body down. It makes you more grounded, more relaxed, more, you know, I use it at night to help me sleep. It's great for sleep. CBD is the, the primary thing we recommend for anxiety, uh, stress, and uh, it's anti-inflammatory, and it's neuroprotective and neurogenerative. So anything that comes with aging, CBD is good for it. So it's really anti-aging medicine. And Pedro, Any you, drawbacks? Uh, if you're smoking the flower, it could give you a dry mouth, uh, you know, and I always consider that being my body giving me a message that, uh, I need more liquid. I got to drink mm -hmm. more. I, I usually mm -hmm. run on the dehydrated side. So, you know, it's good for me to, to get reminded of that, but no, there's really no drawbacks. I mean, nobody's ever died from it. It's nobody's ever gotten sick from it. Occasionally there might be a, like we put some in capsules and somebody will swallow a cap and they might get, you know, their indigestion or their stomach might react to it in a small way. Uh, so that's not the form for them. Maybe they should take it as a liquid or something else, mm -hmm. but I haven't found any drawbacks. 
maybe you get too relaxed when you're out there trying to, you know, fight wars and shoot people and you're hugging them and giving them flowers instead. Mm -hmm. Uh, Even with CBD? (laughs) THC seems to have the reputation for that. Does CBD also create that that kind of sense of euphoria and... Well, it doesn't Psychoactive. create it doesn't create the euphoria, but it does create the peacefulness hmm. and and the wellness. So, um, yeah. So CBD's now CBD over the years. So I'm going to talk about history for a second. Like America was founded on uh, hemp. You know, they don't publicize that. I talk about it in my book a little bit. George Washington was a hemp farmer back then. It was required uh, for all farmers to grow 25% of their crop as hemp because they needed that hemp to make ropes and sails for the ships so the new world could stay connected to the old world. And that, you know, there's even pictures or drawings of George Washington sitting on his front porch smoking a pipe, you know, of hemp. And um, hemp back then was probably three parts CBD to one part THC. So there's a little bit of THC in there. Um, And it's changed over the years. Now they have hemp that's all CBD and no THC. And I'm a big fan of having a little bit of THC in there that because THC is like a catalyst and it makes the CBD work better. So, you know, if you're out there and you're going to go shopping for CBD, look for something called broad spectrum or full spectrum. That means they're using the whole plant rather than, you know, advertises no THC and 100% CBD. That's made from an isolate of CBD. I mean, it comes from the plant, but it's not, it's not real. uh, It's not real medicine, I'll say. It's not as effective of medicine. It'll do some good. But if you get a full spectrum plant or a broad spectrum plant, um, you're getting not only CBD and a little bit of THC, but you're getting the other phytocannabinoids. And there's over a hundred different cannabinoids in the plant. And there are very minute quantities of all these various cannabinoids, but they work together in the uh, in a synergistic way. And they're starting to study seven or eight of the different cannabinoids, but, uh, you know, they're, it's going to be a long time before they get around to all hundred of them because first they have to isolate it and give that to somebody or an animal so test it by itself. And then oftentimes it's a combination of two or three of them working together that creates the medicinal effect that you want. So, you know, we don't really know exactly what it does. Uh, and we're chipping away at the research. We're doing this research, like I said, uh, but it's going to take time. So uh, I'm excited about, I'm sorry I jump around a bit. I'm just, uh, you didn't want me to script this, so I'm <laughs> just coming no, off the top of my do. head. I'm just coming out of the top of my head. So uh, MCRCM, my research consortium, we're going to publish an article on pain I don't know when it's going to come out, you know, six months or a year from now. And we're going to use that to try and get some funding to come in so we can do real clinical trials. Because uh, to do a clinical trial on a large basis, you know, I got to hire researchers and, you know, it's expensive. So I need some help with that. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we could get any exposure for you out there, um, I think, look, just based on the anecdotal uh, it's just insane that there isn't tons of research in this. And But you got to think about who funds the research, right? Like pharmaceuticals, unless they can have a patent on something uh, as a business. I mean, I get that part, right? It's like not, not everything's intrinsically evil. A business needs to survive, right? And so as a business, if you're going to put a bunch of money into researching something, then you want to own, you know, the product that comes through. And these are natural plants. These are natural, you know, al- alkaloids. There's all sorts of things that are harder to patent and shouldn't be patented but, you know, the problem with our industry is then no one wants to spend money on it. Exactly. The so the pharmaceutical companies want to have a single molecule that they can patent on how to get it, et cetera. I think it's, it's, not, a, not, it's not possible to patent uh, a plant that's grown in nature naturally. They, 
they can't patent it. So yeah, so they're not that. And <laughs> it's taking trying. and it's taking away business from them. You know how much business they're losing and uh, the opioid uh, epidemic with, with people going away from it. Um, I heard that states. I don't know what it is now, but five years ago, states where cannabis was legal had a five percent drop in opioid sales in those states. Five percent. Five percent of their business just went out the door, mm-hmm. st- strictly because CBD and and cannabis was legal in that state. Yep. What else? I mean, we talked about anxiety. We talked about um, pain. Obviously, we talked about cancer, which is a really interesting niche area. Uh, sleep. What you know? What other areas are you getting? You know, kind of anecdotal reports back saying this is helping people. Well, the the, the uh, biggest one, biggest from the standpoint of you can really see it happening is epilepsy and things like epilepsy, seizures, uh, you know, neurological disorders that cause you to uh, do involuntary movements, um, uh, essential tremors, uh, you know, things like Parkinson's and, and tremors and stuff like that. Those are neurological disorders. CBD and not THC, CBD by itself, or maybe, you know, that 24 to 1 ratio is what uh, is very effective. And I've got, you know, a number of clients that are have children that are on it. And it's just, it's just so beneficial to them. And now there's really no, no negative, uh, you know, side effects or no negative uh, possibilities that can hurt them. So... And you can't, you know, you can't really overdose on it. I always tell people when they're taking it to start low and go slow and slowly titrate up until you're getting an everyday right down on a, you know, like pain is obvious. People are used to thinking of pain is uh, on a scale of one to 10. My pain's at a seven. You know, I took this medicine and it dropped down to a three. I mean, the next day I increased the dose and it went down to two and a half. You know, you just keep tracking it. You can plot it out. At some point, it tops out. And then it starts going downhill. And it starts getting, the more is not better. With cannabis, we say uh, less is more. That Oftentimes, the smaller amount is better than a larger amount. If someone's at a particular dose and it's not working, I say, try lowering your dose and see what that does. And oftentimes... That's better than trying to raise the dose. But anyhow, when you try titrating up and you're drawing this curve, it gets up, it plateaus out and for a while. And then as you increase the dose, it starts to go down. And the results are not as good as they were at a lower dose. So you can figure out your dose by using feedback from titration. So somebody, I'm always telling people, you know, become your own doctor. Stop going to ask other people for advice. S- try this stuff. Start off low. See what works for you. Watch your feedback. Do a little scientific experiment. You're the guinea pig. And chart it out. And it may change over time, but you know where you're at now. You know, it's uh, uh, 13 drops works for you. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it helps so many different things. So why does it help so many different things? I'm going to talk about that for a second. So one of the things that they discovered in the last, uh, you know, 20, 30 years, um, a lot of research was done in Israel. And Raphael Mitchulam or Micholam, I don't know exactly how you pronounce it, now called the godfather of cannabis, he discovered CBD and isolated it. He isolated THC and and spent years studying this. So what they discovered over the years was that inside of our body, we have an endocannabinoid system. We have a whole system. I kind of think of it as a nervous system, you know, something like little wires going all over the place. We have, uh, there's no wires, but it's connected to everything in the body. And the endocannabinoid system is kind of in charge of all the other organs and all the other systems and it's in charge of what makes you feel better and make what wellness you know any disease or stress or anything that's out of balance there's something in your endocannabinoid system that's out of whack it's out of balance maybe it's too much of this or too little of that 
but it's out of balance. And because it's out of balance, you're out of balance. So what cannabis does is it balances the endocannabinoid system. And then once the endocannabinoid system is back in balance, we go back to the holistic approach to the body. And that is the body's an intelligent system. It knows how to heal itself if you just give it the optimal conditions to be in. Um, uh, so why does CBD help so many different things? Because it balances the endocannabinoid system and the body heals itself. I like to say CBD inspires the body to heal itself. It's not the CBD doing it. It's your body doing it. So we're just giving the body the optimum conditions to heal itself. Amen. You know, that's very in line with naturopathic, natural medicine in general is, you know, anything that allows the body uh, the freedom to go back to homeostasis and, and kind of nudges things back to that balance. That's, that's true nature's medicine. So no, I love it. Leonard, we're running out of time. Tell us the name of your book. Tell us how people can find you and your work. Okay. Uh, the book is called CBD, a patient's guide to medicinal cannabis. Healing Without the High. It's a long title, but uh, CBD, if you do a search on CBD and my name, uh, Amazon.com sells it. Um, by the way, it's been a bestseller on Amazon. It's sold over 40,000 copies in the two years it's been out. And it was one of the first books to come out. And I can say I wrote the book on CBD. It's titled <laughs> CBD. It's not the only book, but it's one of the best books. And I get, you know, newsletters, not newsletters, emails from people all the time saying, hey, your book has really changed my life and helped. So in that book, well, I won't go there. Let me talk, answer your question. Um, I have a website called SynergyCBD.com. And if somebody goes to that, S-Y-N-E-R-G-Y-C-B-D.com. So at that website, you can buy the book through us. Um, and we would appreciate that. And I will sign it. Every, every book that's bought through us gets my signature and, you know, a little well-wishing note maybe. Um, and uh, we can sell the book to all 48 states or actually internationally. So that's, I don't have a problem with that. Um, inside the book, there is a section on dosing. Um, I break it up into three different charts. One's uh, micro dosing, standard dosing, and and macro dosing. So, cancer would be a macro dose uh, situation. Micro dosing is you know very small amounts, one drop, two drops. Sometimes people take my tincture, three drops, and wow, you know that's they can sleep better and it's really helping them and etc. That's a micro dose. So what's nice about this is humans can tell you what's going on and what they ate and things that might affect the, the dosing. But an animal, dogs, um, are very responsive to, to cannabis. Don't ever blow THC smoke in a dog's nose. That's really not cool. <laughs> they're so sensitive uh, and they're, you know, smell um, uh, factories that uh, it, it would blow them out. But you can put a little bit in their food, a few drops of uh, oil-based uh, CBD in their food, but how much to put in? Well, you could use this chart to figure out, well, my dog weighs uh, 50 pounds and, you know, I want to give him so many milligrams per pound, you know, so you can you can use the chart to help with that. Uh, another thing in the book is, I, and there is a chapter on, on veterinary uses and for animals that was written by one of the top veterinary uh, doctors, um, uh, Gary Richards. Um, but there's a section on uh, different diseases and uh, what you would do for different diseases. And we cover like 30 different diseases. So, um, That's you wonderful. know, and but basically my book was put together as a research uh, book, you know, something you would keep on the on the shelf. Uh, in your research uh, library that you go to now and then you want to look up this or that or the other thing. It's not really a, 
written as a story. It's written as uh, it's full of facts and stuff like that. Very well organized. It's great. It's great. I have it. It's it's wonderful. We use it as a reference. We've been giving our dogs CBD chews. They're getting a little a little further on in age, and you know, orthopedic issues um, are much better with the CBD chews. Uh, and we've been, you know, just playing with dosage and all of it, but I, you know, it's hands down, the dogs are doing better doing it this way. The, we did a lot of research on this book. There's 50 pages of end notes and footnotes of all the research that we did to gather this information. So it's, it's a really good research tool. Great. I love it. All right. Uh, Leonard, you are a legend. You've been around for a long time doing this, and, uh, you know, you are finally, uh, you know, being proven right. It's been a while. You know, it's you got to be on the cutting edge of things for a long time uh, before society catches up. And hopefully, uh, you know, the oncologists and some of the docs listening to my show will, you know, take note and start looking at the research and accelerating this. Right. People are dying. People are suffering. People, you know, are needlessly ailing uh, and medicine's supposed to fix that. So let's not wait for the big clunky institutions. Let's get, let's get going. Let's get fast and light and let's help people, especially with something that has really no side effects, um, and is legal and, um, has tons and tons of anecdotal uh, evidence and testimonials. I mean, it just seems like a no brainer to me. Thank you. Um, it's been a really a pleasure talking with you and uh, sharing with the people. There's one little last thing I want to add to this that may appeal to some people. I lived in India for five years. I was studying meditation and yoga and all that stuff, uh, spiritual stuff, and I view where cannabis used to grow wild on my property. Um, but I learned how to take that energy, that spiritual energy, things I generate with Qigong and other practices that I use today. We put all of that into the plant that we grow. We grow all our own plants, all that energy. We fill it with good healing, loving uh, energy. We make our products uh, that way. So all of that, it, it um, it's a very spiritual plant, I, I believe. So I would encourage people to try it out. Try CBD. See, to see if it helps you sleep better at night. Um, I wish you all wellness and success in your life. And I'm here to you know help you if I can. Leonard, thank you so much, folks. You heard it. Check it out. At least open your eyes and figure out you know where in your life you could fit this in. Dr. Pedram Shojai, always a pleasure. I'll see you in the next podcast.